Hello everybody, this is Stringer my back for round three of Group H. And this will conclude round three for the group stage. So, let's have a look at our fight card for Group H. At first, we are going to see Ugh, taking a crack at Tyrant King. Then, we will see Owen 2 Iron Dan taking on Killer Wolf. At third, we'll see Cudgel Booth going up against our comeback specialist, LP Gauzy. And as for our main event of this session, it is 2-0 Black Rider looking to make it 3 out of 3 as they take on the heavy hitter Shin Dominus. But let's get on with our first matchup, which is Ur versus Tyrant King. Ooh, hello, we're in the Alpha Arena. Right, in the red corner for Ur, we got Spinosaurus, the Blitz type version. So you know what that means, don't you? Ur's gonna get, well, gonna start with two crits, not gonna get two crits. But they'll start with them. Uh, got, got the main event victory over Iron Dan in round two. And to be honest, I like the look of the team a lot more in this tournament than compared to last year. I think there's definitely been some improvements. Right, in the red blue corner for Tyrant King, we have got Black T Rex. Tyrant King suffered defeat to Shin Dominus in round one. In the back. Looking to get another win on the board here in round three. Right, ooh, click the rock. Ooh, oh, done it just in time. Oh, but that's a tie. Oh, and that's a crit from the Black T-Rex. Well, no crits from Spino this time. Black T-Rex is having none of it. Right, don't botch the Crimson Flame. There we go. Done it. Well, not the start that U would have wanted. A massive hit from Tyrant King. Well, this could have gone badly wrong for Tyrant King here because he's got two fire dinosaurs in first against this Spino, but that was a massive hit from Tyrant King and a really promising start. Right, for Ty. Oh, that's a hit, and that should be lethal for Spinosaurus. And it is. Wow. I don't think we were expecting this. Right, coming in next for Ur, we got a Rhinoceratops. The imposter version. Well, I didn't think Ur would be losing at this stage in the match. Given that Spinosaurus would have the type advantage over Black T-Rex and the Super Eel Kark. But they are. The Blitz type effect really backfired. But, you know, that's the risk of using a Blitz Dinosaur. It either pays off handsomely or it doesn't. But there we go. Uh, getting another a hit on the board there. Right, that's a tie. But remember, this Black T-Rex can get a death fire when it's on really low health. So uh, we'll have to be careful. Oh, that's a big Crimson Flame. This has been a very good start from Tyrant King. Really tyrannical so far, you have to say. Rock, scissors, paper, rock. Got it right that time. Boosh. And in fact, it might be lethal for a Rhinoceratops. I don't think it will be, but well, when am I ever right? Okay, yeah, I didn't think it'd be lethal, but it was still a massive hit from Tyrant King. Okay, there it is. There's the hit from a Rhinoceratops that does take out the Black T-Rex. So, Ur will not be 2-0 down, but they've got this Super Eel here to deal with now. Awake the mode on 3. Tyrant King looking really strong in this match so far. But can they get... This? Can they get it done? Okay, that's a five. Oh, that's a tie. Oh, that's going to be curtains for these Arrhinoceratops. Eocarcaria gets the crit. And Tyrant King is 2-1 up. Right, coming in third for Ur, we've got Armatus with a spectral armor. 
Now, let's not count Ur out of this contest yet, because this spectr the spectral armor is a big factor here. And we have seen in previous matches in this tournament, armored dinosaurs can change the entire outcome. So let's not count Ur out yet. But yeah, if they do want this win, they're gonna have to get the spectral armor off, I feel. And that starts with getting hits like this crept. Oh, and he poisoned it as well. Good hit from Ur. Ooh, but Eocarcaria responds with a hit of his own. Right, that's twice. And that's another hit, and it will be awakening times. Oh, hang on, get the flare sword out of the way first. This is it now. Well, the odds are well in Tyrant King's favour here. Yeah. A tie will do it. Any hit will do it for Tyrant King. Ooh, but they don't get it, and instead... It's going to be a big hit from Armatus. Could that change this match's momentum? And the recovery as well. That'll come in handy. And an Earth Barrier. What a hit from Earth. Massive hit. Could that be a turning point? It's a tie. It's going to fill up the bar. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay, it might survive this, and it does. Well, is is Tyrant King going to be denied the bonus point? Yes, he is. But it is still Tyrant King's victory. Okay, we can skip this. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, Tyrant King will get this win, but it will not be a bonus point win because the Eocarcaria did go down. And I think, that's the first time I think that the guy on the right died instead of the guy that the guy on the right survived. No, I, I don't know. But anyway, it's Tyrant King's victory. It's three points for them. And, ooh, well, it, the big hits cost them. But, you know, they got some hits of their own. They... Mounted a little comeback, but it was a bit too late. But well played the Tyrant King. Okie dokie, on to match number two. Okie dokie, in the red corner, representing Iron Dan, we have got a Stegosaurus. Now, I do feel this Stegosaurus is going to have to do it, do its uh, fair share of work here. Because Iron Dan will have two type disadvantages in this matchup. Okay, we are on Sunset Peak, which is... Actually, good news for both of our guys, because both our teams have water types. So both teams will get to the advantage. Right, in the blue corner, for Killer Wolf, we have got Super Carnotaurus Awaken Mode on 1. Well, it'll either be spectacularly awesome, or it's going to be a spectacular fail. Um, they're 1 and 1 right now, Killer Wolf. Iron Dan still searching for their first win of the tournament. Will they get it here? Remember, last year, Iron Dan quarter-finalists took out Ultimate Dino King in the knockout rounds. But they're really not having a good tournament so far. And that's a good start for here from Killer Wolf. Elemental, future! Well, this'll be interesting. Oh, he gets the hit! Okay, he's not a big hit. But it is a hit. This has been a quick start from Killer Wolf. And that's all she wrote for Stegosaurus. And, well, now Iron Dan's in a bit of trouble. Okay, we'll have to take the fantasy here, though, with Karkirodontosaurus. But, uh, this is not good for Iron Dan because Ampelosaurus comes in next with type advantage and terrain advantage as well, mind. Oh, uh, this is not good. This is really not a good matchup for Iron Dan. If you kill a wolf, do have to fancy your chances, especially now you've taken out that Stegosaurus. For me, that Stegosaurus was key to Iron Dan getting a win here. Okay, can the Kark at least take down the Kano without taking damage? And yes, it can! It's a fire cannon! 
Right, okay. Kark is on full health. It'll take a hit from the terrain advantage that the Amplosaurus has. It's still a long shot because of the type disadvantage, but it's still on. Right, coming in next for Killer Wolf. Well, I've already said it, we've got Amplosaurus. It's a hunter type, it's gonna have the terrain advantage, so it's gonna get off the next hit, which is gonna be a paper hit. Now, I will say, if the Spino comes in against the Amplosaurus, Spino will still get terrain advantage because the Amplosaurus already used his terrain advantage. Oh, what's this? This is a shockwave, isn't it? That's a big shot there from the Killer Wolf. That's going to stop Iron Dan getting the next hit as well. Oh, it could be a crit, yeah. Oh, it's a crit! And it's Hunter type as well, so... This Futaba Cannon, I think this might actually be lethal. This is going to be lethal. Oh, look at that! Killed it instantly! Alright, coming in food for Iron Dan, we got Super Spino. Now, it will have terrain advantage, so it will get the next hit. And it's a much needed crit. So what was Killer Wolf's advantage? Iron Dan can use the same to his advantage too. But yeah, this has really gone against Iron Dan in this match. <laughs> Everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong. But they will get this Water Sword. Can they use this as a turning point? They do have the Awaken Mode as well, mind you. If they can get the Packy Rhinosaurus with that Awaken Mode, they still got a chance. Oh, there's another hit. Another Shockwave here would be costly. Okay, no Shockwave. Okay, twice. Oh, that's a tie. The Spino needs to get rid of this Amplosaurus. Oh, there's another hit. Well, the shockwave here would be catastrophic, and it is. It's awakening mode as well. Oh, that's not good, because this... Okay, if we get a tie here. Okay, it's a tie. Another tie here, and it's down to Pachyrhinosaurus. Oh, okay, okay, you get, he gets the hit, Amplosaurus is down, but you do feel is wasted. And this Pachyrhinosaurus has type advantage. Right, coming in food for Killer Wolf, we got Pachyrhinosaurus as well. They'll kick themselves if they don't win this match from this position. But, again, we have seen stranger things in this tournament. Still, anything can happen. For Iron Dan, can they at least secure a losing bonus point? You know, I think given how catastrophic this match has gone for them, a losing bonus point, you know, I think they'd take that. Nope. <laughs> wow. Wow. And that, Iron Dan slip into 0 and 3, and Killer Wolf gets a win. And yeah. Everything that could have gone wrong for Iron Dan went wrong for Iron Dan. Hell, even the Awakened hit, even though they got the hit, the Amplosaurus was dead anyway. You know, a tie would have been better. That only really suited Killer Wolf. Yeah, it's, uh, there's still hope for them, but it's been a very rotten start. Okie dokie, on to our third match. Right then, in the red corner for Cudgel Booth, we've got Megalosaurus. Cudgel Booth still searching for their first win of the tournament. Yeah, it's not been the best start for them, let's be honest. But they have shown a lot of promise in, this, in their matches, and they have shown that they probably will get some wins in this tournament. Right, in the blue corner for LP Gozzi, we have got Terry. And well, out they got a really odd tournament so far. They got the comeback win against Ur in round one. And well, they pretty much snatched a draw out of nowhere against Shindominus in round two, so. Makes me wonder what kind of performance we'll get from Elpigozzi in round three. 
but there have been a comeback <laughs> a, a comeback specialist in this tournament. Okay, um, there's no grass types, so there's no terrain advantages yet. So let's get generating some moves. Oh, okay. Gozzy's gonna get the first hit of the match. The fence boost coming in there. Good start from Gozzy. Oh, but look, look, look at that. All the secret moves being triggered at once. Oh, it's going to be a gigantic hit. Courtesy of the gigantic four. Megalosaurus getting a big hit. Good response from Kudjo Booth this. Jeez, that was a lot of damage. No death fire either. That could have uh, been costly. Tight. Another tie. Oh, that's another hit from Megalosaurus. That's going to be all she wrote for Terry. A psychic bind. My favourite secret move, actually. I just love this move. Yum, yum. And that's going to be Terry down and out. Okie dokie. Coming in next for Elpy Gods, and we've got Super Ceratosaurus. A wake mode on four. Well, Gozzy's been in a losing position in all their matches so far, so this is nothing new to them. So there'll, there'll be no sense of panic yet. Even though Megalosaurus has got some big hits in. No panic. Little tight. Ooh, that's a big crit that could be from Ceratosaurus. Putting an end to Megalosaurus there. Gonna stop that gigantic fall and level things up. Right, coming in next for Kudrow Booth, we've got Alpha Acrocanthosaurus. Amazingly, the only one in this tournament. I think it's... Maybe it's seen a decline in its popularity. And interestingly enough, no fire moves. In fact, neither of our guys got any super moves. Let's see how this plays out. Oh, that's a tie. But this acro is tie type, I believe, so ties will probably favour the alpha acro. Cudgel Booth getting another hit there as an ACT rocket. Now, it, it is uh, random how many turns you have to wait until it comes down and hits the opponent. It could be right away. Okay, that's one. And it's not right away. Oh, that's a big crit from the Ceratosaurus. Our little ratty friend really putting up a good fight here. And in fact, puts Gozzy in the lead. Max up that attack boost. Okay, that's twice. And still the rocket hasn't come down. Okay, there's a hit from Alpha Acro, but because the rocket is already in effect and hasn't come down yet, it'll be a normal hit like that. Okay, here it comes. Whoa, decent damage there. And that puts Cudgel Booth back in the lead. Oh, another crit and light recovery coming as well. A back and forth contest, but Ceratosaurus almost killed it. Gets that big hit, and it is awakening time. Now, a tie here would be very beneficial for Gozzi. Three. Okay, well, it's wasted, but hey, at least he got the head. Ooh, fighting fire with fire, I see. It's coming in third. For Cudgel Booth, we got Ceratosaurus. Now, this one does have some wind moves. This has been a really good back and forth contest. Neither side really able to establish a decent lead. Well, it's little ratty thing versus little ratty thing. Ooh, that's a tie. And that's another tie, and that'll be curtains for Gozzi Ceratosaurus. Right, coming in food to help me Gozzi, we've got Super Ferrisinosaurus. Now, this dude has put in a lot of work for Gozzi in this tournament. 
and has pretty much been the main reason why they got the points they've got. Well, it won't have to do as much work this time because there's only Ceratosaurus to deal with. Right. So four. Oh, it does get the next hit on the board. Uh, that's one. That might be below half. Well, it's definitely below half now. That's the losing bonus point secured for Gauzy. Oh, it's a tie. Is Cudgel Booth going to taste defeat again? Can they salvage a bonus point out of this? Another tie. And that tile duet. Down goes Ceratosaurus, and it is Gauzy's victory. Much more convincing this time, I should say. But it is three points nonetheless, and Cudgel Booth's wait for a win goes on. Right then, it is time for our main event. Okie dokie, in the red corner, representing Black Rider, we have got a Mega Raptor. Black Rider enjoying a 2 0 start so far in this tournament. Definitely a better showing compared to last year, where I think they only won one match in the group stage and was wiped out in the group stage. But looking a lot better this year. Right, in the blue corner for Shin Dominus, we have Zuni Ceratops. Shin Dominus also undefeated in this tournament, but in all honesty, should really be 2 0. But uh, <laughs> they pretty much threw away the win against Gozzi. Well, they got a draw though, so they didn't lose. But, yeah, they should have won that. I think we can all agree that they, they should have won that match. Right, we're in the Colosseum, which doesn't really matter because no one has secret dinosaurs. No blitz types. Let's get some moves generated. So, yeah, this is an interesting event, main event this could be. Ooh, counter blitz getting triggered there. So, despite the hit from Mega Raptor, is we're going to see a counter blitz, maybe? Indeed we are, and that could be a crucial counter blitz because without it, the Mega Raptor would have got the crit there and that would have been lethal for Zuni Ceratops. Massive counter blitz that for Shin Dominus. I'll say that, Mega Raptor will get the crit anyway. <laughs> and it does. <laughs> oh, random number generator. Why do you do this? It's like, no, the Mega Raptor is getting a crit. No matter how many times I have to give it to him. Right, coming in next for Shin Dominus, we've got Angiceratops. Well, we all know what happens if you cross this fiend. It was the main reason why Shin Dominus won in round one against Tyrant King. But this has been a good start from Black Rider so far. And that's another hit on the board. Okay, that's a tie. Oh, that's another hit from the Meg. It's a Venom fan. Pianitsmosaurus coming in here. And yeah, this has been a really good start from Black Rider. Shin Dominus, a slow start yet again. Well, they had a slow start against Tyrant King, came back to win. And they had a very fast start against Gauzy and didn't win. So based on that logic... Shin Dominus is probably going to win this match. <laughs> well, they can't win if they can't get hits. Okay, there's a hit. And in fact, I think that's their first shot of the match. Recovery's going to get rid of the poison as well. The uh, tie bomb's coming in as well. That could be a big hit from Shin Dominus. Dino, Dino Illusion gets triggered. Of course it does, because Dino Illusion's like the best move in the game. It's so freaking OP. Okay, but with the tie bomb, I think a tie will be lethal for Mega Raptor, so. Oh, well, he gets the hit. Would have preferred a tie, to be honest. In the sense that the Mega Raptor would have died. But, you know, it got rid of the Dino Illusion, and he might get the next hit anyway. Oh, there, there's the tie that Shin Dominus wanted. There goes the tie bomb, and there goes Mega Raptor. Now, coming in next for Black Rider, we've got a Shunasaurus. Now, this is a problem in this matchup. 
Given that all of Shin Dominus and Dinosaurs are lightning types, and this Shinosaurus of type disadvantage could be a problem here for Black Rider. But the Mega Raptor did do a fair bit of work, so Black Rider still has a decent lead, and one hit will finish the Anchiceratops. So he's not in a dire situation. But what it does do opens the door for Shin Dominus to come back in this contest. But Anchiceratops, that's all they're gonna do here because it's going down. Now the saving grace for the Shunosaurus is that his crit's not a war. So, you know, there is that. Right, coming in third for Shin Dominus, we have got Storacosaurus. Hmm. Now the Thunder Driver only gets triggered after a win. So that's something to take into account. But yeah, if it gets off a Thunder Driver on the Shunosaurus, it's probably gonna finish the job on it. And the Shunosaurus does have Ocean Panic. So, okay, even though it's a hit, it is a hit. But because the Thunder Driver isn't triggered, the type disadvantage does not apply there. Oh, that's a tie. Tie Bomb will go off. No Ocean Panic, though. Oh, but there's the hit that Shindominus wants. A Softening Beam. Well, the Shunosaurus is a tie specialist, but ties are gonna cost it now. That softening beam is gonna weak lower its defense in a tie by 200. I don't know what I mean, whether it takes like 200 more damage or whatever, but there it is. Okay, it does get the next hit, another tie bomb coming in, chipping away at Storacosaurus's health, and that guarantees the losing bonus point. But Storacosaurus gets off another softening beam. I'm not sure if this move stacks. I don't think it does. Or maybe it will. I don't know. Oh, uh, you I mean, if it stacks, then it's dust and sing. But not really, because, you know, the dinosaur will be on low health anyway. Oh, that's another hit. Another tie bomb. Can Black Rider get the bonus point victory? Oh, they get the bonus point win! It's Black Rider's victory! That's a crit block as well, but it's irrelevant because Black Riders won the match anyway. And it's a bonus point victory to boot. And they will go 3-0 in this tournament. Hmm. I thought it would be closer, but there we go. Shindominus licking their wounds. Right, that concludes round three for the group stage. So we'll have a look at how group H stands and we can end the session. Right, that's how Group H looks, ladies and gentlemen. So we got Black Rider at the top. 11 points so far from three games. Pretty impressive, showing. Then we have Tyrant King in second, courtesy of those two bonus points on eight points. Then we have El Igozi in third place on seven points. Two wins and a draw. Killer Wolf rising up to fourth after their second win of the tournament. Shin Dominus and Ur on four points, but Shin Dominus above Ur because they do have a better overall record. Then we have these two poor saps at the bottom, winless and in Cuddle Booth's case, pointless. Well, round four is definitely going to be a big round for these two. And in fact, I'd probably say if other results go a specific way and these two don't win, that could be their hopes of qualifying from the group stage over. Right, that's it for this session, so I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, ta-ta!